It's difficult to think about combat without armored vehicles because they've been around for over a hundred years and have been in virtually every major conflict since the early 1900s. Tanks have evolved greatly since those primitive times, and not only have they gotten tougher and more mobile thanks to technological advances, but they have massive amounts of firepower that can rain down all sorts of heck on their enemies. Now, it's not a stretch to say that every world power out there has their own epic tank, and they're always trying to build another one to be the top dog, and with striking results. So with that in mind, here now are the 20 most powerful tanks in the world. Number 20. The Leopard 2. Now, it's a little bit difficult to think about what tank we should start out with because there have been so many over the years and they have served a wide variety of functions. So, I've decided to go with one that was vital to the defense of a certain nation during a period of potential crisis. In this case, I'm talking about the Cold War and what happened when the Allies and one of their former allies literally split Germany down the middle. The result of this would be a standoff between the NATO powers and the Warsaw Pact. Western Germany was on the NATO side, and they needed a tank that would help them to defend their borders against Eastern Germany's tanks and Russian-backed forces should that wall come down in a bad way. The result of this was the Leopard 2 main battle tank. The tank went into design not long after the original Leopard was made, but they needed to bolster it because of the opposition it could be facing. In fact, it was so successful that even after the Cold War, it would be exported all over the world. You can even find the Leopard 2 today in 19 different countries, and that just goes to show that if you do have a nice tank design, there will be a country that wants it even decades after it's born. The Leopard 2 main battle tank is armed with a fully stabilized 120mm smoothbore gun, and the vehicle carries 42 rounds for the main gun. That came in handy when it had to fire at all sorts of targets, and it proved to be a rather accurate gun overall. Plus, if it needed to hit less armored targets, it had two different machine guns that it could bust out if the four-man crew needed it to, including one that was strapped to the roof of the tank. We think this tank did a good job of setting the tone for the rest of the list, and let's see if the others can live up to its legacy. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. For today's fancy topic, we have a look at this picture and say out loud what you think it is. Yes, I know that at least part of it is photoshopped because the people in the foreground, but don't go overthinking it, or at least just yet. This picture is allegedly of the largest tank that the world has ever seen, and if the scaling of the picture is to be believed, that would indeed be one heck of a tank and something that a nation would definitely love to have in their arsenal. I mean, think about it. If this is one-to-one -to, -one to how it is, that thing is not only massive, but it'd be freaking hard to bring down short of a really big bomb. Not to mention, the firepower of that gun wouldn't only bring down vehicles, it'd be tough enough to bring down an entire city block depending on the bullet's explosive yield. And so, do I think that it's real? Well, not really in the battlefield sense, given that there are massive machines out there that have been put to work in the construction field, not to mention things like space shuttles and the lack thereof, it's not impossible that someone has made such a tank. But the trick here is that unlike those construction vehicles, this one would have to be not only functional, but durable and feasible to put out on a battlefield. And there wouldn't really be a feasible battlefield that this could fit on. That's not even talking about the fact that it would really be hard to move, even with incredibly powerful engines, as it would need to be super armor-plated and not be ripped apart easily. When it comes to the battles these machines are in, it's true that power and durability is the key, but without being feasible, not to mention cost-effective, it'd be just plain wrong to have one of these vehicles when you can have a literal army of smaller ones that can do a better job without being a bigger target. As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag fancy topic and let me know your opinion in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. EET-1 Osorio 
Now, as noted in the intro, just about every major world power has a tank of their own to show off in a fight should it need to. But while you might picture the superpowers like the United States, UK, China, Russia, Germany, and so on, there are actually plenty of countries with tanks that you may not realize. You know, like Brazil. It's true that this nation isn't known for being in the big wars, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a need for a tank. In fact, the EET-1 Osorio is special because it was a tank developed as a private venture and the government barely had any involvement in its construction. That was partly because the tank was not only for the nation's army, but something that could be an export boosting their economy in the process. Or at least that was the plan. Not all tanks are successful, as you will find out. This one would be designed especially to accommodate the limited infrastructure of Brazil, and by that I mean that it could travel on roads and bridges that the country had, which are not as durable as the other nations I mentioned earlier. To their credit though, despite not having the support of the government, they were able to make the tank via two prototypes, and most would agree that it is a functional tank. However, no one outside of the country wanted to buy it, and the government refused to put it into the army, and as such, the project would be scuttled. It's really sad that it went that way, but then again, not everything that's built is made to last. Number 18. The Sabra Tank Now, I know it's difficult to talk about Israel in any capacity and the events going on in that region, so I'll focus on the tank. The Sabra tank was an attempt by the Israeli army to overhaul one of their previous tank designs, while ensuring that their tanks would last longer as they continued to defend the countries they were in. The upgraded tanks have increased lethality, protection, and mobility, and the irony of this tank is that it's not in service in Israel. But then where is it? Well, that's actually Turkey. The country made a contract with Israel for the latter to make a tank for the former, and the tank passed all the trials that were put in front of it. Some of the upgrades that made the tank special included a vastly more powerful gun than previous Israeli tanks, an upgraded army that would help defend it from other tank rounds. The tank was so successful that it had multiple variants made to suit the needs of the Turkish army further. Believe it or not, this kind of contract, well, it's very popular in the world and has been done between many countries for all kinds of vehicles over the years, not only the tanks. Number 17. The K-2 Black Panther The K-2 Black Panther is one that is currently in use by South Korea. What's interesting about this tank is that the government specifically wanted one that would use only parts and technology available in South Korea. So why is that interesting? Well, typically, countries don't mind using parts from other nations so long as they're up to snuff and not something that they can do better on their own. But with the K2 Black Panther, they wanted only indigenous technology and parts for their vehicles, and for the record, they succeeded in making a pretty awesome tank. Currently, the K-2 is one of the most advanced main battle tanks in the world, outclassing anything that North Korea or China have. And that's important because those are the two main enemies of the nation, and so them having an army of these tanks would definitely make them feel better should another conflict come their way. The tank isn't only powerful, but it can withstand attacks from 120mm tank rounds. And it's so smart, it will automatically identify a target and cycle through special rounds that it has for the right tool for the job. In other words, when South Korea makes something, they don't just go halfway. They keep going until they can get the best possible job done. And we should all respect and fear that. Number 16. Type 10 Tank Japan is another country you wouldn't expect to hear about tanks from. After all, to our knowledge, they haven't really been in a conflict where they actually need the use of a tank to defend themselves or attack other nations, at least recently. And being on an island nation kind of helps with that analysis. Another thing to remember is that after World War II, they swore off having a full-on dedicated military. Today, they only have a self-defense force. However, given the world events and wars and the fact that all the other main nations have accumulated power over the years with things like tanks, they needed to get on the ball themselves, so they eventually made the Type 10. What happened with Type 1 through 9? Well, nobody has any idea. Something to note here is that the Type 10 isn't as heavy as you would expect a tank to be, and that's for two reasons. First of all, it helps them to be a quicker tank on the battlefield, which could be a great thing. And secondly, it was partially due to the Japanese road laws. 
After all, highways are a great way to transport vehicles like tanks from one place to another. And while it's not as powerful and well-armored as other nations' main battle tanks, it does serve a purpose, and a good one at that. These are tanks that are sent in to support the other units and help them to be alive versus rushing in headfirst to meet the enemy. The self-defense force was very happy with them and ordered a nice bunch that are still in service today. They might not need to use them often, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Number 15. Leclerc Tank The Leclerc tank is not to be scoffed at, and it's one that has been in use for many decades without any kind of issue. In fact, after France retired its other tank line, the Leclerc became their main one and the only tank in service within the country. Furthermore, it would be named after a French tank general in World War II. One of the things that makes this tank so special is its durability and how it outfits itself for the battlefield situation. Its armor is a combination of steel, ceramics, and Kevlar, Damaged modules are easily replaceable, and they can even customize the tank to handle specific battlefield and enemy scenarios. Now that makes it a versatile tank, and one that would prove a hassle to beat. Furthermore, the French doubled the amount of electronics within the tank, so that if one were to be damaged or destroyed, it could run on the backup. Add to that the good speed and firepower, and you've got a tank that will never surrender. Number 14. The C-1 Ariette One thing that can be appreciated about this video so far is that I'm honestly showing you a wide array of tanks from various countries, and the C-1 Ariette is one that comes from Italy. Even though it was first placed into action in 1995, the Italian army still has over 200 of these tanks in live service, which goes to show just how reliable that they are. This main battle tank is protected with composite armor that is similar to the British Chobham. Adding on armor kits can be fitted for a higher level of protection. The tank has a powerful main gun that has 15 rounds ready to go for when combat begins. And don't worry, it has many more rounds than that. But they're stored within the tank's hull for easy loading and to protect it from potential explosive startups. While the Italian army is still using its tank, it has bolstered its ranks by creating variants of it that improve what this one does, such as with the C2 version that has even better armor and can withstand getting hit by landmines. Number 13. The Arjun Main Battle Tank Here's yet another nation that you may not associate with having tanks due to its location and lack of modern wars that it's been in. But again, it's better to be safe than sorry, and the Arjun main battle tank is one reason the Indian people and their military will not be sorry if a battle comes to their doorstep. Not unlike in South Korea, as I talked about earlier, the Arjun main battle tank was made to be an indigenous tank, one that was made by India with Indian parts, and they were able to make the tanks work but they weren't exactly the best of the best. Some of them are still being used to this day, but they've also gotten tanks from places like Russia in order to help bolster their numbers. Not to mention, they've upgraded versions of the original main battle tank that they use for the army these days. It also doesn't help that these tanks weren't the most operational or maintainable, and in a battlefield scenario, that's a worry that you don't want to end up having. Number 12. Type 99. On the opposite side of the spectrum, it is very easy to see China having a fleet of main battle tanks at their disposal, as they've not only been involved in numerous wars, but have been deemed by many to be the main threat or instigator should another war break out. And unlike the Indian tank I just talked about, the Type 99 is a mixture of Chinese materials with stylings from Russian and Western tanks. Over 600 of these tanks are in use by China today, and it's said to be their most powerful main battle tank. This main battle tank is fitted with unique active laser protection system, which uses a high-powered laser to disrupt a missile's infrared guidance signal disabling enemy observation optics and damaging the eyesight of enemy gunners. 
Now, you probably didn't think that they would use lasers to help keep themselves safe, but they do. It also features an advanced targeting system that enables it to track targets on the move in case of a fight. Add to that the super protective armor and the firepower that can put an enemy vehicle down, and China's doing just fine in the tank department. Number 11. The Altay Battle Tank Now, before I talked about how Turkey had a tank, but it was one that was made by Israel. But with the Altay battle tank, it's yet another indigenous tank so that the country could rely on their own work should the need arise. But was it a good attempt or just another A for effort scenario? Well, in this case, it would be a little bit of both. You see, this is a very recent tank in terms of its deployment, but not because they just started making it. Rather, they started making it years ago and then realized they didn't have the parts they needed to get it completed and make it function. And when they asked other nations for help, they got turned down. It took them several years to get the parts they wanted to finish off this tank, and ironically, they ended up getting the final parts from South Korea. Fast forward to now, and the tanks are done and being produced for their armies. Not unlike its components, it has many different weapons that it uses in battle, including its main gun and several machine guns that are planted around its body. It's also super advanced with special hunter-killer tracking systems and the ability to get locked onto its next target while preparing to finish off the one in front of it. Number 10. The T-80 Battle Tank It may have taken half the list, but we finally made it to Russia. Given their roles in various world wars over the last 100 years or so, it would be foolish to think that they don't have scores of tanks at their beck and call. Not to mention, they've been using those tanks in Ukraine over the last several years. But I'm not going to focus on the modern tanks. I'm going to have a look at one that was developed during a period of the Soviet Union. The T-80 battle tank was a very special one that would be adapted, believe it or not, from a helicopter design and was one of the fastest tanks on the battlefield thanks to its gas turbine engine. The tanks were so good, they had over 4,500 of them in service before the fall of the USSR, and eventually they found cheaper ways to make and maintain tanks, so the T-80s were phased out of service. Number 9. Hokpung Ho Tank Well, I talked about South Korea's tanks earlier, so it's only fair that I talk about their neighbors to the north and what tanks that they have. That's where this tank comes in, affectionately known as Storm Tiger. Props for an awesome name, you have to give them that. But here's where things get both interesting and weird. I mean, it is North Korea after all. We know that the tank exists, and North Korea has shown it off multiple times in their country, including during a parade. However, the exact specs on the tank, like its speed and power, capability and so on, well, that's kind of largely unknown. And that's because North Korea is paranoid as all get out. They don't want any kind of information about their military getting out to their enemies, especially the United States and South Korea. And as such, many have only been able to speculate as to what they think that the tank can do. Number 8. The T-90 Battle Tank The T-90 Battle Tank is another Russian tank that I need to bring up, because while the other model was a remnant of the past, this one is absolutely a hallmark of the present. It is said to be the most modern tank that the Russian army has, and that means it stands well above everything the country brought forth previously. And that might be why it's so popular around the world. Plus, like India have bought this tank in great numbers despite it being over 30 years old and thus potentially needing of an upgrade. But you don't fix what isn't broken, right? And that's exactly why Russia is fine using this powerful yet cost-effective tank. Number 7. The PT-91 Twardy Tank The Polish tank that I aim to show off to you now is the PT-91 Twardy tank, which, ironically, is a model of tank that was based off of a Russian one and then upgraded to their own specifications. 
Twardy's protection is enhanced by utilizing indigenously developed explosive reactive armor block. Have you noticed that a whole lot of these tanks have made it so that they can take an explosive burst and just keep on going? It's almost like they don't want their rides to get one hit KO'd. Plus, they've improved the engine, they have a powerful array of weaponry to take down foes, and they only need a crew of about three men to properly operate it. While not the only tank in the Polish army, it is one that is one of the leaders of the pack. Number 6. The Ramses II Now, the Ramses II tank, if not obvious by the name, is the key armored vehicle for the Egyptian forces. Yet again, it's another tank that has its roots in Russia, but with a bit of a twist. The tank that the Egyptians got from Russia was then sent to the United States to see how well they could upgrade it for the Egyptian army. It took a while, but they eventually sent a good enough prototype that the Egyptians then further improved after they were concerned about some of the capabilities of the tank. When it was finished, it not only had a good armament, but ones that complied with NATO to the extent that the United Coalition would supply them with the ammunition for the tank. That's all very clever. Number 5. Zulfikar Tank The Middle East is a section of the world that always seems to be at conflict, or really close to conflict, which is why nations like Iran have kept to themselves and prepared for all kinds of threat, including having plenty of tanks at their disposal. The country's main tank is the Zulfikar tank, but not unlike the North Korean tank I discussed, this is another vehicle that has plenty of mystery to it. For despite being in numerous scuffles, which includes with its neighbor in Iraq, the tank's full capabilities are not known. Plus, we don't even know if the tank is in its second or third generation, or if another version is going to be rolling out soon. The best estimates on the tank is that it's about 100 in number, but that's only a guess, and that's a guess from 2010. And you know, things have changed quite a bit in that area ever since then. Number 4. The Al Khalid Tank Now we're staying in the Middle East, and this time we're going to discuss the Al Khalid tank, which is one used in Pakistan, but it's also used in other nations like Myanmar and China, amongst a few others. Operated by a crew of three and armed with a 125mm smooth bore tank gun that's reloaded automatically, the tank uses a fire control system and night fighting equipment to make it quite the threat on the battlefield and durable to enemy fire. While not the biggest tank on the field, it is one that is lighter and smaller, which can help it in certain struggles against bigger and slower foes. Number 3. The AMX-30B2 Here's where things get really interesting. I've noted a couple of times for multiple tanks in this video that protection was one of the biggest priorities. That included taking on other tank fire in order to survive the moment and then be able to fire back. But with the AMX-30B2, that was not the case at all. The goal of this tank was to be powerful and mobile, not to have great protection. Now, that doesn't seem to make sense, and yet the tank does work, and it was shopped around to other nations who happily bought it. It was widely considered one of the least protected modern tanks in the history of tank warfare, which is quite extensive. It just goes to prove that sometimes things just don't make sense when they work out well, despite all the signs pointing to the contrary. Number 2. The TR-85M1 Bisonol Have you ever worked to make something and yet despite everything you do or did, it just doesn't stack up to what other people have gone and done before you? Well, the TR-85M1 Bisonol from Romania is one example of that, but it comes in tank form. The goal of this tank was to improve a Russian tank and then turn it into something that they could use as well. And to their credit, they did improve certain parts of it, which includes the armor and the firepower, 
But the problem is, when you compare it to all the other modern tanks that you've been shown, well, it just doesn't quite add up. That's why it's believed that Romania is going to make a new version that does match up to everything else, and we can only wish them luck on that. Number 1. The FV-101 Scorpion The FV-101 Scorpion is a British armored reconnaissance vehicle that debuted in the 1970s. It would be designed for rapid deployment and recon, offering exceptional agility and speed. The thing only weighs about 8.3 tons, and it featured a top speed of around 50 miles an hour. Armed with a 76mm gun, it would provide effective firepower, and its versatility made it a mainstay in a lot of the British military operations. Powered by a Jaguar J60 4.2 liter petrol engine, it could achieve a top speed of 50 mile per hour on road and 30 miles per hour on off-road terrain. Its range did vary based on the terrain, but typically it could get up to around 400 miles. In addition to that gun I spoke about earlier, it also came with coaxial machine guns and smoke grenade launchers for added defensive capability. It boasted a crew of just three, with a driver, a gunner, and a commander, and it had a low profile and a lightweight design, which allowed it to easily be transported on a plane and made it suitable for rapid deployment in various operations. The tank was so effective in the role of being a reconnaissance vehicle and a scouting vehicle that it actually stayed as the lead tank for that purpose for quite a long time. This vehicle saw action in the Falklands War, the Gulf War, the Yugoslav Wars of 1991-2001, to and the Iraqi War, where the British Scorpions were deployed during the invasion and the subsequent operations. And they would also be deployed for the war in Afghanistan, which went on from 2001-2021, to as part of a NATO-led International Security Assistance Force, where they supported their allies. Well, that's all from the realm of tanks and the ones that can dominate the battlefield, or have dominated it in the past. Which of these tanks did you feel was the best of the best? And do you wish that you could have driven one of these tanks yourself? If so, which one would it be? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments down below. Check out the other things that are showing up on your screen, and I will see you next time.